Welcome back to Doing Life Radio. I'm Sam. And I'm Joyce. We're a married couple living in South Jersey, talking about all things life with a special focus on food, fitness, and faith. And this one is really all things life. It's all things life. <laughs> Nothing really food, fitness, or faith. It is a bunch of completely useless knowledge that will hopefully entertain you. Yeah. We got together and decided, let's just have a little fun. Let's kind of throw these things together. We didn't get our guests like we wanted to get, so we said... Let's come up with something interesting and try to blow each other's minds. Yeah, we had a recording time, but the guest was not able to make it. So we decided to go our separate ways, come up with some fun facts <laughs> that we thought would be entertaining and just do a fun episode. So hopefully you think it's fun. We had fun. We had a good You'll time. You'll see some of our facts were more concrete <laughs> than others. <laughs> and I have learned how to double check my facts. Thank you, Google. Hey, we appreciate you guys listening. Uh, find us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, uh, you can listen to us on Podomatic, iTunes, uh, Spotify, all everywhere you find your, your podcast, you can find us. Rate, review, like, and share. We appreciate it. And here we are on with some fun facts found to you, found through the internet from, by Sam and Joyce. I mean, yeah, I think that's a fair way to say it. That's a fair way. Okay. And this episode... We're going to share some special things with each other. Yeah, some <laughs> facts. We'll see if any of our facts maybe overlapped or... I'm really curious to see if that happened. Like, Yeah, cause... because you obviously got your facts from Google because where else do you get facts? Uh, Bing, you, you can Bing it. things too. Nobody Bings anything. I, Bing. I prefer Bing. I don't, for, really? I don't like Google as much as I do like Bing. Okay. So my first fact, and we have... So we're doing this. We're having a little fun, just a little sharing out there. You can't see my facts, can I, you? I can't. I can, but I'm not looking okay. at them. So it, like, just same as you can see mine. And I'm yeah, but my vision's so bad. You're not that looking I can't at see it. It's probably all for that. Yeah, I can definitely see your even with your handwriting. I could if I really wanted to get down yeah. to it. Um, so all right. So it's the first time we're sharing with each other right. these facts. But the reason why we're doing this is we do have guests lined up to come in, but we can't schedule them in. It's we're like that classic scheduling. Like life thing. Everything's getting in the way and yes. stuff like that. So we're going to have a little fun yeah, and uh, hopefully make some people a little bit smarter uh, yeah. in the process. So I'll tell you my very first fact because it, it, it made me LOL. Okay. So the inventor, the creator of Match.com lost his girlfriend to someone she met. On Match.com. On match Fantastic. <laughs> Why was his girlfriend on Match.com? That's, well, that's another question. Maybe she was checking up on his work. Maybe she was like, oh, this is a great website. This is a nice, easy way to meet some people. All right. That's so, a pretty funny one. That I like that. pretty funny. Now, most of my facts I found, I found from at least two or three different sources. So I can't cite one source. I, it's just a way I roll. Yeah. I like to see it in multiple places or else I don't. You know, it's just I don't like to see one-offs and stuff like that. So I have seen Especially this in multiple Especially something places. like that. That's a little... It's a little too perfect. It seems, yeah, exactly. It's a little too perfect. And being the founder of Match.com, I would assume he's got <laughs> some money. So he'd be able to. I check hope that she off. at least upgraded. <laughs> well, money doesn't mean that the. No, of course <laughs> not. Of course not That's she says. silly. Okay, let's go on to one of mine. Okay. Most of mine, I'm going to ask you questions and see if you know the answer. All right, okay. sounds good. You'll what be do disappointed you when I know think everything. Is the most popular item sold at Walmart? Most popular item sold at Walmart. Yes. Unit for unit sold more than any other item that they sell. All right. Now, initially, if I was thinking logically, I would go with like gum, but we're kind of going extreme and something that's worth picking up. So, underwear? Nope. What is it? Bananas. Bananas? Bananas. The most popular item sold at Walmart and is bananas. They that's sell bana more bananas than they sell anything else. That's bananas. That is bananas. It's that's crazy. That's so bizarre. Now, do they really sell them or do they go through them? Because here's the, the other sold. side. It says sold. I know. Here's the other thing to think about. Because bananas only keep for so long. So Yeah, and every time you walk in, the the produce is right up front. And right. You, most people are like, oh, let me throw not out some every bananas. Wal that's funny, too, because not every Walmart has groceries. I know. But that's most so now, I don't know that they're building Walmarts that don't have groceries I anymore. I think so if there's a new... Walmart without groceries, that's just an old Walmart that, right. you know, that, the, that doesn't bananas, happen anymore. I would never. Bananas. I would never have done that. Bananas. That's so bizarre. All right. So I have this one is um, a little bit physical. So I'm hoping people hear this one actually can go along with that. Okay. But if you take <laughs> this might be gross for you. So if you take your finger and put it in your ear and kind of scratch back and forth, okay, you can hear the Pac-Man sound. 
You got to do it quick. Well, I can't hear because you keep talking. <laughs> it's a podcast. You have to put something out there. I don't know. Do you babe. hear it a little bit? I guess. I, I did mean, it. I'm trying. If, yeah, if you're just like scratch back and forth, <laughs> give it your finger in your ear okay. and that's, just go back and that's forth. That's a little bizarre. And you can hear Pac Man going, wow, 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 wow. I don't think wow. it was Pac Man doing it. That is Pac Man. It does it. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. I know, wow. but all right. <laughs> No, and I'm pretty sure the guy wasn't like oh, scratching his ear and be like, "Oh, this would, this would make a great game," but that's a, just a random odd fact. You take you stick your finger in your ear and and scratch side to side, like front to back, front front to head, back to uh-huh. head. And well, I, <laughs> folks, it's gonna get better. I, I it's would, gonna get better. I would only put this on the list if it works. It totally works. We're gonna get better. <laughs> Listen, let me know. You, you prove it. Prove Try it. it out. Put it, yeah, put okay. a little thumbs up or something on. Okay. Uh, next fact. Next fact. Baked beans. Okay. They're not baked. Why are they called baked beans if they're not baked? I don't know. I guess because. <laughs> this is part of the information it, we need to follow up on. Well, they're stewed. They're stewed beans? And I guess that doesn't sound very appealing. No, it doesn't. Stewed beans? Uh-uh. So they're baked beans. <laughs> they call them, but they don't bake them. They, they call, stew them. They stew. Them. I guess that makes complete sense. You look at the things, and, yeah. You know, when you bake something, it has a completely different texture now, I, to it. I couldn't find any information on Boston baked beans. Boston baked. Why is that? Is Boston it, baked beans. It's the candy. little candies. Yeah, it's like oh, a yeah, peanut they're... with the candy coating. I don't know if those are baked. I've got. They're not no... even beans. <laughs> yeah, they're not beans at all because <laughs> peanuts aren't beans. Oh no, but they are. They're legumes, so they're kind of I anyway. Guess technically, there's another. There's another mind blowing fact. You, I almost peanuts put that on my nuts, list. But that we peanuts know that. aren't nuts. But I feel like at this stage of people having the peanut allergy, people Most kind people, of know that peanuts actually aren't nuts. They're right. legumes. For those that don't know, right? Peanut is actually not a nut. Not nuts at all. are classified by growing on trees. Peanuts grow underground. Yeah. AKA, they are now legumes. They're legumes. Which is in the bean family, yep. or legumes a, are, bean. or beans are in the legume family. So. Whatever. All that kind of stuff. All right. So next amazing fact that I found: Saudi Arabia imports their camels from Australia. What? <laughs> well, then they breed them there, so now they're from Saudi Arabia. I there, like they if can't. It was do they still enough, like today? They do. They that? imported. That's what they said. They import their camels from Australia. So my guess is there's better. There's camel farms, breeding farms okay. in Australia, and they're bringing them to the Middle East. <laughs> oh. So all those pictures you see, you think, oh, that's a Middle Eastern camel. No, he's he's Australian. He's Australian. Mate. <laughs> huh. No, I definitely didn't know he's that. He's like, have that's... another shrimp on the barbie and get it, bring it to you with your camel. That's very. When's bizarre. the last time you because seen you would think that you would only have to do that so many times before they can just <laughs> mate them Create in Saudi Arabia. I don't know. There must be such a proficient. Maybe farm they're in not Australia. good at that in Saudi Arabia breeding camels. Maybe the environment. I don't know. I'm not it. saying. That I'm sure they're good at everything. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Not they're only sending anyone. male camels over or something like that. That's smart. That's how you hold on to your business. You only <laughs> send either male or females, and then they are still relying they're on like, wait you. Wait a second. Even Noah got two different ones. Let's, yes. let's work oh, this out. Oh, those Australians out. are crafty. <laughs> they're wise ones. That is, that's the way to do it. I so, like yeah. It. So, somewhere next time you visit Australia, make sure you look up their great camel farm. And they uh, they send them out. They send All them right. to the movies. That's so bizarre. They th- just think of a cargo ship because you're, you're only getting them there by cargo ship for the most part. I, I would assume. Load I can't think of another a, way. A cargo ship full of camels going, heading to the Middle East. That's, All boys. <laughs> <laughs> All boys. <laughs> we don't want to have any issues there. <laughs> this is their children's college fund. <laughs> got to take care of it. All right, what okay, do you got? My next is a question for a you. A question. What do you think is the very first toy to ever be advertised on television? Oh, wow. I can't even go. Like, I watch those shows, like, uh, on the History Channel, like mm-hmm. the American Picker or whatever it is, where they oh, go through. with the trash pickers, yes. They don't pick trash. They pick other people's collectibles. Okay. Go through. So they have tons of little toys. So I can see all these, like, little metal toys and all that kind of stuff. Just take but, a guess. Think of I'm something think older. Of the, well, the TV, the, a lot of these toys are in before TVs. I don't know. Let's go with something totally bizarre and like the Rubik's Cube. Oh, that's a good guess, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's because it's old, but it's it's like TV time. It's colored. Yeah. Like, I don't know. 
but you're wrong. <laughs> nice try, but... It is Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head is the first one on the TV? The first one advertised on television was oh Mr. Potato goodness. Head. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's really... That's not as old as I thought. Like, well, I thought... TV's not that old old i guess yeah i don't know when tv come around like yeah the, we don't know that fact we don't <laughs> we we don't know facts we just talk but we know them. even in our parents day which wasn't that long ago they right. would have like one tv our in the house it's not through. like we're now we have a tv in almost every room and they're usually well technically by, we like, got um, tvs in our hands and, yeah and our phones and everything right. like so that. they're, so they're we're more like, like even, satellite controlled like it's a whole different system that. now oh yeah like our parents watched uh color television come in to be yeah so we're just getting uh we just passed the 50th anniversary date for the moon landing right and so, yeah, you got to look 50 years ago. That was all black and white. So yep. it wasn't too long before that when the TVs actually just came into fruition. Before that was radio. And I'm sure so Mr. Potato Head. Still a fun game. It is a great little thing. I, I have one. Our, I have a set in my office. I loved when our kids played Potato Heads. We had a huge had a bag of all these different bag. like little heads, big heads, and then all the yep. like girl lady mrs potato head parts and the boy <laughs> mr potato head parts and the baby potato head parts and they were fun uh, yeah no i love that thing it was hard to get rid of that and bag they'd make their funny faces and think it yep. was hilarious uh it was no it's still great it's still funny and yeah. mr potato head is still alive and well He's through the toy story well. franchises yeah. have kind of reinvigorated it's, if anyone in the world wants to see toy story 4 no spoilers no spoilers no spoilers toy story, a lot of people went to see that movie it didn't do as well as they expected no it didn't not do as nearly well. as good as toy story 3 no it didn't do as well as they expected but it still because did very well we don't want to cry anymore <laughs> like can't the, these toys just be happy the last one was kind of emotional yeah, they're sitting there like uh to go to a pixar film and cry At every Toy pixar story film, and up need to up. pick up the happiness <laughs> up. wow nice throwback there we're, we're throwing the whole thing on there so i have right. a very bizarre one right. that i had to do a lot of research because i did not believe it so I've, wow i chased a lot of trails <laughs> I typically just believed google so you might want to double check Went my facts down <laughs> a couple of different things uh what color milk does a hippopotamus give out I, I mean, I want to say white, but you I'm going to guess say it. that's not the case. But wouldn't you, maybe off, off white, like a cream color or something like that? I'm going to go, go like bizarre. Pink. Pink. Really? Pepto Bismol yes! pink. It comes out. <laughs> hippopotamus milk comes out pink, and it has something to do with like a combination of the what do they call the hipposudric acid and the the north hipposudric acid like okay, some so combination do of all things. hippos have yeah pink? okay yeah. so it's not well, like zoo kept because the, we're the, feeding them weird the, toxic the girl hippos have well, okay thank you. <laughs> noted noted okay um yeah if you look it up you google up hippopotamus milk okay It'll show you jars and so jars i don't pink expect you milk. to know this i'm like just curious because i mean humans drink cow milk which is bizarre right and we drink goat's milk also bizarre. it's not bizarre but the, the who started that? well that's right we bizarre. weren't designed we were designed humans feed humans cows feed out cows i mean that's how right, we're right, right, designed right. yeah um don't get me wrong i love me some cheese but does it taste like strawberry milk i doubt no, it no not the taste <laughs> i'm asking can humans consume hippopotamus that's milk a is that a question. thing I, or is that i totally bogus really don't know because and, that's, uh, I mean, why if we can't have if we can eat cows? Well, milk? you think they got it? They they're more free range than uh, wonder, than our, yeah, than see our if cows. It's healthy. See what that's can all about because the kids would love that. <laughs> no, they wouldn't because they're they're uh, they're going there and you know, they got this pink milk and they're thinking, yay, strawberry, strawberry milk. Oh my god! A single cup. I've just looked. I just googled it up right here. Okay, let's. A see. single cup of hippo's milk has five hundred calories. Well, that's a cup. Well, no, that I'm, no, no, to... that's that's extreme. But nursing uh, babies need extra fat and calories. That's why right. mother's milk so is milk so is dense so in fat and calories. So that's crazy. not shocking because um, hippopotamuses are humongous and they've they got to feed their babies. Don't think it would be tasty. Apparently, we can drink it. But it's not going to be good. Okay. Uh, well, put their kids in elderly people. Goat's medical milk conditions. isn't good either. So there's nothing that straight out says yes or no. Okay. Um, and then now, as I'm reading it, there's like one, there's a one site here saying, uh, "Do you think it's actually pink?" And they're saying, "No, it's not actually pink, but it looks pink." Well, if it looks pink, I, I don't. 
<laughs> like these. It's this not, is why I hate the internet. It's not technically pink. It may appear pink to the human eye, right? But, but to the hippopotamus eye, it looks like milk. <laughs> like, How no, do we know that? I don't know. Mother. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. Wait, this so answers.com. Oh, a human is supposed to drink eight glasses of milk. There's there's nothing quick and easy here about. It. But yeah. apparently, it's got a lot of calories and it's pink. Okay, so. the human is not supposed to drink eight glasses of milk a day. So I don't know what site you were looking at that. Not eight glass, a glass, a glass, not eight glasses, no. a glass. A single no. cup of hippo's milk is No grown up should be drinking a glass of milk every when day. When they reference a cup on these things, are they referencing I eight ounces? I, I would assume because that's one cup. Okay. <laughs> Science! Okay. okay, what's what's next? Can what I great go? question do you have for okay. me? Okay, this one you might know because when I saw this fact, I remember hearing it on the Wally Show, which is one of our favorite it podcasts. It is one of our favorite podcasts. So you might actually know this okay. one. But, okay, so we all know here in America, if you have an emergency, you call... 911. Of course. Right. In South Korea, they have a couple of numbers for different incidences. Really? One of them is 113. Why would you call 113 in South Korea? One, one, three. I have no idea. Like, I have oh, no I'm idea. Oh, I'm glad whatsoever. you don't remember. I don't remember. This is an actual number. This is an actual thing that you would call to report a spy. A spy in South Korea? Yes. I guess it makes sense. If you're sense. in South Korea and you suspect a spy, you just call 113 and you report them. Huh. That's I don't think we have such a thing here in the United States. I don't know how I would report a spy. <laughs> how do you know what a spy looks like? I guess I like? could call 911 and say, this might be an emergency. <laughs> There's a guy in a trench coat and sunglasses. He's got binoculars. <laughs> binoculars. He's walking around taking notes. And every time he walks, he goes, dun 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 So I don't know what that, uh, what yeah. that means. One, they have a special number. So they have a special number to report spies. So, so I'm guessing they categorize paranoid them. much. Yeah. Well, in South <laughs> Korea, I guess it makes sense because you had North Korea and their leader is not the most stable individual out there. We hear. We hear rumor. Someone. Rumor has it. <laughs> rumor has we it. We don't know him. <laughs> we don't know him personally. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, I don't know how his English is. Whether he's listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess it makes sense on that end of things. Can you I imagine? Guess. Put, I would be curious to know how frequently this number is used. Can you imagine living in a culture where you have to have a designated no. number to call out a spy? No. And I wonder if this is just a thing, but people don't necessarily know about it. Or if this is like a prevalent thing where you ask the kids, like, what number do you call? And they're like, 113. <laughs> like we do to our kindergartners, you know, like in case right. of emergency, what do you call? And they're like, 911. Right, 911. Do you know any other numbers that we have around us? Do you know what 411 is? Information. 411 is information. There's probably one person still working in that office yeah. for all the elder leaders still calling it. Yep. And do you know what 811 is? Um, 811, no. If you're going to dig underground, so you call 811 and it connects you with an office so that if you're going to be digging holes or something like that in your yard, they'll let you know well, if you're going to Are we be... digging that many holes that we have designated number? Yeah, well, I think every bit of construction, you don't know if you're going to be hitting a gas line, an electric line, you can cause some pretty serious issues if you don't... Uh, don't call that 811, number. 811, folks. 811. It is important. It is very, very important. If you, even if you don't think, yeah, I'm not going to hit anything. Lines. Imagine like pulling out an auger and you're going to dig, you know, with a machine down in there and you pull a gas line. Bad news. Bad news. Is it my turn for it's a It's your fact? turn. Okay. So, um. How many do you have? 250 million. I, it was whatever Google gave me I at only the have time. nine. I think I have 10 or 11, okay. something like that. We might not get to all of them. But uh, this one I found to be interesting. It's not a mind-blowing fact, but uh, I'll ask you this question. We'll lead into it this way. Okay. Describe Humpty Dumpty to me. He's a hard-boiled egg. He's not. What? Okay. Oh, he's just an egg, not hard-boiled? He's not. He's an egg. Why is he an egg? Because that's what you see on the picture. That's what you see in the poem? Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Right. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall all the king's horses and, and all, all the king's, king's men couldn't, couldn't put humpty, humpty together, together again. again where does it say he's an egg well it doesn't. it doesn't so what is he he's not an egg but what is he he's a person is it's a, it's a rhyme so how did, the next well, why question, do i think he's an egg there we go that was a question i was trying to lead to so in 1872 all right okay. i got this these details so i'm thinking to myself why isn't he why do we just assume he's an egg yeah 
1872, the author Lewis Carroll also wrote Alice in Wonderland, oh, wrote a book I called... I love Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, you do. Uh, also wrote a book called Through the Looking Glass, yes. another popular book. Yep. In this book, uh, there's a chapter entitled Humpty Dumpty Okay. in the Looking Glass. And in there is where Humpty Dumpty first appears as, as an, egg. an egg. But he wrote Humpty Dumpty, right? 1872. No, I don't think... He didn't write Humpty Dumpty. No, he, he wrote Humpty. Alice in Wonderland. He wrote Alice in Wonderland. And he wrote Through the Looking Glass. Through the Looking Glass described Humpty Dumpty. So oh, okay. It says um, uh, in the book, in the chapter, here's the chapter. It's an extract from Through the Looking Glass says, however, the egg only got larger and larger and more and more human. When she had come within a few yards of it, she saw that it had eyes and a nose and a mouth. And when she had come close to it, she saw clearly that it was Humpty Dumpty himself. Bam. She said, it can't be anyone else. She said to herself, I'm as certain of this as if his name were written all over his face. So that in 1872, long after the poem was written, Forget, I didn't write down when the poem was written. That is the first time we see Humpty Dumpty as an egg in that book and has permeated culture. And now every time I you think it. about it, I mean, it makes sense. Egg falls, egg cracks. Yep. Have you, you ever can't been put able it to put it back together again? Who can? I mean, not all the, the king's, king's horses are men. If the king's horses can't put this thing back together again, and you know, <laughs> it's virtually impossible. It. <laughs> 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 like clomping it all to, back together again. So, yeah, Humpty Dumpty, not an egg. Okay. Based on that story. So someone else twisted it up and made him look like an egg. Interesting. It is interesting. That's why we pulled it out for this. Okay. <laughs> Give me another one. Okay. High heel shoes. Love them. I know you do. And you Not like for when me I to wear, wear them. And <laughs> I don't I... love to wear them. Let's back up. <laughs> Let's I don't he like to wear them. when I wear high I like heel when you wear heels. Shoes. But I wear them very, very frequently. Very rarely. One, um, they're not comfortable. Two, you cannot walk fast. And three, if I'm with you and you alone, I feel somewhat normal. But if you bring other people into the mix, I feel freakishly tall. I still remember this quote from early dating. You wanted to date me. Yes. Because I was tall. Yes. And you could wear heels. Yes. I wanted to date someone that I could wear heels <laughs> with, not someone that I should wear heels See, with. See, I took it as... I because of me, you now have the green light to wear heels. I and I do, but I don't want to be with my girlfriends and wearing heels because I look ridiculous, especially if they're in flats and no, I'm in heels. They look ridiculous because no, they they're look not tall. Cute because they're short. No, <laughs> no, you look cute because you're tall. Whatever. Anyway, no offense, any short people out there. Turns out, high heels. High heels weren't even created for women. They were created. For men, what? so you should be breaking out the heels and struggling. <laughs> no, to walk. and look freakishly tall among my short friends. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible. So apparently, they were designed for men to make it easier to ride their horses. <laughs> so it would be easier to stay in the stirrups. That is the origin origin story, origin of, story high of high heel heels. shoes. Make it How easier to they... stay in their stirrups now. I'm, th I'm thinking more of a boot, like a heel. Boot. Well, here, here's true fact: cowboy boots have a heel on them. Yeah. But if you get your foot so far up in the stirrup, the heel holding the heel, like you, you sit and you put your foot in the stirrup. And now I know this because I used to ride horses back With your in the heels? day when I was a kid. No, uh, your heel's not anywhere near it. It's a ball of your foot. Maybe they're different now. I, I would, <laughs> I would like to think so. I'd be curious to see what some of those, uh, some of those early images are like, and why it made it easy. Maybe because the heel forced your foot in a pa in a position where your the ball of your foot was on. I don't. There was know, no question about it. I know that the they weren't foot. created for me. No wonder I don't enjoy them so much. There's a lot of things that weren't created created for, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will never forget you saying. Wearing like you could wear heels, I thought it meant you always wore heels. Nope, very infrequently. <laughs> Although I wear them more lately now that those like little boot, those like short boot styles yeah, I mean, came I'm out. I'm not those looking at boobies. like six inch stilettos no, or something never. like that. Just a no, little. I have something one pair of black heels there. that I wear once a year to the Utopia Christmas party. <laughs> they're my Christmas party <laughs> shoes, Christmas and they're that's shoes. the only time I ever wear them. Now you love wearing but flats, like 
Like those, uh, I like what do they call them? Ballet, like ballet slipper shoes, flats yeah. and wear those and all the time. And flip flops, of course. Those I love flip flops. So I mean, as bad as heels are for your feet, those are so bad for your feet, too. I'm sure, I'm sure that they are. Yeah, and but I'm the, the shoes one that are good for your posture, again, put like two inches of height on you, and I don't want to be taller. So I tend right. to go for ones that have no support. It's so different because guys, like, you want, want to, to be, be taller. taller. You yeah. size, I mean, guys just naturally size themselves up when they, like, I mean, I know I did. I, maybe yeah. it's a sports thing. Like you kind of side yourself up against the person next to you. It's just and we want to ever so slightly make ourselves smaller. You just want to blend into the background. Not even blend either. in. I just don't want to be like ahead above everybody. You don't want else, that to be the reason wise. why you stick out yeah. is your height. I guess. Where I'm, I've lived a life of height. So I'm yeah. six foot four. If you guys don't know, and uh, to me that's perfectly normal and average but apparently that's not uh, yeah not i'm five eight so i'm not so tall but yeah, when i put not, heels on i'm a solid five ten easily and that's <laughs> tall for a girl <laughs> i don't think it's i don't think it's that absurd so what are the Maybe average I'm five nine i don't know we'll have to measure me we'll have to pull it out our our boys are shooting up past yeah. that uh you know they're, they're all right flying. give us a fact they don't care how tall we are they they totally care. Someone right now is writing it down. Being like, I can't oh, believe they're so tall. I didn't concerning. know he was actually six four. I didn't know if he's actually five eight. But they're writing it down. So here's a unique one. When you're a kid, here. Oh, let's start off this. Can you name okay. the nine planets? Oh, I mean, do you want me to? Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. I said, can you? Is it yes or no? I know. Oh yes. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes, I can. End of story. Let's just leave it at that. I was not a good student in school. You know this. Okay, let's try. Let's, okay. try. let's try it together because I don't think it. <laughs> what? Okay. Is that not one of the nine? <laughs> well, I'm, in don't my head, I'm like thinking I'm let's, let's work our way from the sun all the way out. But I can't do that. I, I don't, don't think either. So Please. I'm happy to get com- some of these out, it let has, alone the order. It's been a long time. We really should pull our boys in for this and yeah, see if hopefully they, can, they, know. they can name okay, it out. Okay, we've got think- Earth. We got Earth. Are we counting Pluto, or is that kicked out? Okay, th- well, that's where my fact kind of comes into play. So yeah, okay. I wanted to see if you would name Pluto. Of course, I think I will always name Pluto. Pluto is always a plan. Pluto always. will always have a special place in my heart. Pluto, you, you don't are get the to ninth kick planet. someone out. Yeah, just because someone decides just because they're you're smaller not... than you. Yeah, we're not yeah. bullying Pluto. Exactly, it's Pluto not happening you're, here today. You're back in right here. Do my <laughs> friends put you back in on that? Okay, so okay, Earth and Pluto. Earth, Pluto, Jupiter. Jupiter. Neptune. Neptune. Venus. Someone right now is like Mars. Flying. Oh my goodness, you're doing well. Venus, Mars. Um, Saturn and Uranus. <laughs> and there's one more? Uranus. Um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Earth, Neptune, Jupiter, Venus, Mars, Saturn. Now I'm getting lost. Mars, Jupiter. Isn't there a song? Boys go to Jupiter to get more stupider? That's not a song. That's not a very, <laughs> very good song at all. What are we missing? I have no idea what we're missing. I'm trying to trying to figure it out. I should probably Google this thing. I'm gonna see. I wonder if it'll break Google if I say what are the nine planets? What? Well, just ask what are the eight ones the then. Nine. What what planet are we missing? Call us now and tell us. We got Saturn. To live. Mercury. 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 Always forget Mercury. <laughs> Mercury. She's cute little. <laughs> Mercury. Okay, so anyways, from the... I did well. You did actually really well. You got eight of the nine, uh, well... If you count Pluto, I got eight of the nine. We count Pluto. Yeah. It's, and so I think our whole generation counts it. I think everyone before us. Yes. Um, so when, from the moment Pluto was discovered... Okay. To the moment it was declassified as a planet. Okay. All right. So beginning of our knowledge of Pluto. Right. To the end of our ac- acknowledgement. <laughs> acknowledgement of Pluto. Okay. It still didn't make a full revolution around the sun. Wow. Pluto. Maybe it's not a planet. What a slacker. <laughs> it's so far away. It's got such a long trip. It didn't even make it one time around the sun and all Pluto. that time. Poor, poor Pluto. So, wow, you really turned your back on Pluto pretty quick there. <laughs> now, just because someone does something a little bit slower, just because it, uh, it it rolls at a different level. Pluto was discovered in 1930, in case you're wondering. I Take wasn't. that fact with you. Discovered in 1930, and when did they uh, declassify? Not that long ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. So 2000 something? Happened. Yeah, it was unfortunately too recently. I never thought in my lifetime we'd lose a planet. <laughs> you never think it's going to happen you before you go. You never think it's going to happen to you. And when it does, it's shocking. Shocking. Okay. 
let's move on to something funnier. Funnier than Pluto? Yeah. All right. What do you think is the largest muscle in the human body? Isn't it the heart? Nope. What is it? It's the butt. The butt. The gluteus maximus. <laughs> Isn't it like two muscles in one then? Um, I don't know if it's technically two. Is it classifies? I guess still, I would like to think my butt's probably bigger than my heart. Uh, probably, honey. <laughs> probably. We're reaching a really sensitive area here. <laughs> It's like, man, girl, your heart's so big, but you know what's bigger? Uh, that's probably not the way to go. Your butt. <laughs> so, so, yes. so if you say someone your has a really big... largest muscle is your butt. <laughs> say someone has a really big heart, you're really implying... That their butt is bigger? They got their butt is bigger. Because that's Everyone's what Everyone's butt said. is bigger, though. Everyone's... Your butt is bigger than your heart. Yes. That's not, So, when we go into Valentine's Day, I love you with all my butt... Instead of all my heart. I don't think that we say I love you with all my heart because it's so large. <laughs> I, I think you're missing the mark there, love. <laughs> I think you're missing the mark. All right. The gluteus maximus, largest. Largest muscle. Wor works the hardest because it's got to support you nearly yep. every day. You're sitting down on that. You're using it to yep, Whether you're around. standing up or sitting down, it's got to support you. It does have to support you. Okay. So I got another fact that is probably one you might already know. Okay. But... Vending machines kill more people every year than sharks. How do you die via vending machine? You must not have spent a lot of time with vending machines. Okay, let me roll this scenario you put out. Put your for money you. in. You put your money in, and it's one of those things that and spins often it out. gets caught, it and gets you've got to like bam, 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 okay. and then it comes down. If the bam, bam, bam doesn't work, what's the next step? Shake, shake, <laughs> shake, 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 shake. <laughs> Give me and my chips. Shake, shake, shake. Oh! Is that true? It's a. It is a true fact that the average deaths per year are higher. Yeah. With vending machines than they are with sharks. Which is probably still not a lot. Correct. It but might be one to like point still, five or something like that. I don't understand why they're not doing something about that and making the vending machines not tippable. <laughs> why do we even have vending machines anymore? You have a gas station on every corner where you can get a candy bar. Uh, yeah, but gas stations. I mean. <laughs> what do you think you're going to get in a vending machine that's better than what you can get at a gas station? Know. It's the same candy bars. It's convenience. It's, exactly it's right the there. Same. It's like where you're at in the spot. Like you go into a shopping mall, a strip mall. Yeah. Usually there's vending machines there and that kind of stuff. Yeah. When I worked at JCPenney's in the break room, there were vending machines. Vending machines are, yeah. Was, that's what you did. You went on your break and you went to the vending machine. You got your sun chips and you're happy. One of the greatest scenes in The Office, the TV show The Office, is yes. when Jim put all of Dwight's stuff in in the vending machine and Dwight went to grab his wallet to buy his stuff back from the vending machine and his wallet was in there so Jim gave him a dollar and quarters to it. buy his, his wallet back. All right, so vending machines uh, are bigger killers than sharks. Okay. That's that's the moral of this story. Okay, I'm not going to give you too long to think about this because this could go on forever, but <laughs> there is only one letter that does not appear in any of the U.S. state names. Whoa. What letter would that be? Is it X? Nope. What state Texas. has X? Texas. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wow. Okay, I don't want to get too crazy on it. Z? Nope. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Q? What would Z? Yes, Q. Q. That was always, that's like the last one you guess in like Scrabble and what's a it's Wheel of Fortune, stuff like that. You never guess a Q. I guess that uh, makes sense. I'm trying to think what Z is in. Z. Arizona? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Arizona. <laughs> Say comment. I, I don't know why I said That's questions. Like... <laughs> is there a Z in Arizona? <laughs> is that Does that have a Z? Okay. Okay, I have a physical one for you. Okay. This is going to be quite fun. Uh, you cannot hum while holding your nose closed. I believe you. No, you, you want me to I want you hold to, my nose and hum. First, I want you to hum. Hmm. Okay, now hold your nose and try to hum. You can't. You can't. You cannot. It cannot well, be I done. Cannot. <laughs> like yeah, it's like gags it. You like there. shut it all down because you if, like think about it when you're humming. It, feel it. Air where has to come out. Air's coming out, and it's all kind of traveling through your nostrils. Actually, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. 
So okay. that was great. I'm so glad you participated in that I one. I didn't know I had a choice. I thought it was going to be like one of those things like you you cannot lick your ears. Oh, yeah? Uh, 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 and then try to lick your ear. No. You ever try to kiss your elbow? Kiss my elbow? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've tried that. I can lick my nose. Nose your, yeah, uh, tongue to nose. That's fine. Some people yeah. can do that. But can you kiss your elbow? I don't know. I'll try off camera. <laughs> the answer, folks, is no. Okay. You cannot. Apparently you cannot. There you go. Okay. When you are wearing blue jeans or jeans in general, denim, okay. there are two front pockets, two back pockets, and a tiny little one above little one right there. the right pocket. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, it used to be two in the front, one in the back, plus the little tiny one. Really? What is the little tiny one for? Well, I used to think it was like for change, for like nope. your coins or something like that. Keys? Nope. Although now it's perfect for a key fob, now that we've entered that world. That's true. It is. What is that little pocket for? It is for? for your pocket watch. Pocket watch right on oh, your little how classy. right side. Yeah, I guess it makes yep. sense. So you're so proper when you pull out your pocket watch, <laughs> check the time, and put it back in your little pocket. <laughs> if you were wearing a pocket watch, then, like, don't they normally have it like up in their vest or something like that? Like, I a... think that's for their spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> We we started watching Downton. We saw some episodes of Downton Abbey, so now we're all and now of, we're British. Now we're all kinds of classy <laughs> and uh, and British, and so that that's too much. All right, well I have one more. You want to just wrap? Oh good, up? I only have one more too. Okay, perfect. Um, so I wanted to find something in the food, fitness, faith kind of realm. You kinda, wanted to tie this in. Somehow, that was a good idea. Some I should kinda, have done that. <laughs> some kind of topic that was relevant to it, and this is a widely known fact, but maybe it escapes you at least for this moment so you don't remember okay but the olympic games okay there was a phase in the olympic games where every athlete competed naked oh (laughs) i did not know that i'm guessing it wasn't televised (laughs) (laughs) now now this is early in the eighth century so no it wasn't televised I didn't know it went back that far. We're going all the way back to the Greek Why games. did they do that? Well, I'll tell you what. So I was, clothes give you an advantage? I was, no, clothes give, gave a disadvantage. So here's what happened. So early in the, in the 700s, okay, they had these competitions. And ultimately, these competitions were some one-off of something that happened in war. Okay. So running, throwing, wrestling, uh, those kind of things. And that's what all the events were. All the events were some like mono and mono kind of thing. And it was a celebration of the things that happened in war. So ultimately what the Greeks would have is this is our best athlete, our best warrior, because competing through these these games. What happened is during one of the running events, one year, I think somewhere in the early 700s, one of the guys showed up without his loincloth on and won. And he said, like in the history shows, said that uh, clothes slow you down. So then, so then everyone showed up naked. What the happened next is year. in another uh, another race later on, uh, I don't know, decades or whatever later, the mm-hmm. loincloth fell off the lead runner, fell off the lead runner. He got tripped up and it fell down. And then they made a decree the next year that all the athletes would compete naked. Well, if your choice is naked or a loincloth, yeah, I, mean, I guess I can running, see. They weren't running out there in parkas and because that things. It would be difficult to run in. So yeah, so they competed, and uh, a lot of people like would think like it was. It wasn't so much a glorification of the body, so much as it was just convenience. Convenience, and yeah. it was less cumbersome. And looking at the cultures of the time and stuff like that, there was a little bit of celebration, and, and they had you know all that kind of stuff of, of what was going on. They would uh, often oil themselves up with like olive oil and stuff that like that. Is that making you faster? I don't know, but that's just one of the things I said. You they would, wanted to glisten. You would find that they would only be wearing olive oil is what they would say, the, the whole thing there. They so, say it's good for your skin. And then the, uh, so the, that was the Greeks. They had that history of the Olympic Games, which ultimately we, you know, the, the world adopted. I don't know how long ago. Uh, the Romans had their competitions and stuff like that, but they started pl- putting clothes back into the equation because now instead of it being like battles or, or things that represented warriors and, and what they did in battle they actually simulated battles so in order to do that you'd have to actually have your clothes and all that kind of stuff that's right, where we get the, the gladiators such. the big rings and all that kind of stuff i actually learned something neat about the romans you know they're the coliseums yeah and in those coliseums they would uh recreate 
great battles that they had, and that's kind of was a showcase for them. They would also do the chariot races and stuff like that, go around. But they would uh, re- recreate battleship, like battles in the water, in the sea. Oh. They would fill up the Colosseum and actually have little boats representing, so they'd actually have water there to represent. I mean, that's what we do with our movies, right? We I understand. Re- that's exactly what we do. But and, can yeah. you imagine? You think those Colosseums are all stone? Yeah. Doing it right there. They would have, somehow, some way, they'd bring water. I mean, the Romans, they're engineering. They could do anything. It was unbelievable. Yeah. They, they were so far ahead of their times. And just to put a little faith note on that, the Romans, because of the Romans and their ingenuity, it kind of helped the, the spreading of our faith and stuff like that. When Jesus came around, there's a whole whole shebang there. We can go on and on to that. So, But to get back to it, yes, the Olympic Games, not 1994 Olympic Games, but in the early 8th century, they wore nothing. Okay. And had no sponsors, so they weren't all slapped up. They weren't in any commercials. Coke didn't sponsor them. So, yeah, pre-television nudity. That's what it was. Interesting. <laughs> all right, your final fact. Let's okay, wrap up on this final one. one. I hope this is a good one to end with. Jeez, this <laughs> so is pressure. A lot of pressure. Okay, want... who designed the American flag? Let's see. The first name that jumped out was Betsy Ross, but she didn't design it. She's designed one of the flags and put it together. Uh, I have no idea who designed the American flag. So, a very insignificant person. His name is Bob Heft. Okay. He was a junior in high school in 1958. And 1958? Yes. Okay. He got a B- minus on the project. <laughs> and there, even though there were only 48 states, he put 50 stars on his project, assuming that, you know, Alaska and Hawaii would follow suit. Right? Okay. Um. Now, I don't know if the teacher sent them all to the White House or if there was a big competition. Like, that part was very vague. But I know that President Dwight Eisenhower called the school to say that this design was approved and that would now be our flag. And so the teacher changed his grade to an A. (laughs) (laughs) Because the president said so. The president chose it. You get an A. (laughs) So, okay. So he didn't design the flag 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 like the 13 stripes and and the blue and the stars he just added more stars no he designed it With he the, designed the american flag was designed like the 50 star flag well no the stripes came earlier like we had the the 13 stripes representing the 13 colonies among other things it represents the red the white and the blue in the corner he designed the stars part of it like he added the 50 stars to it I don't think so. I think he designed the flag. Because <laughs> the flag is what I'm trying to say. I think you're having a block right there. Because the 13 stripes, the red right. and white, were already there. That was already there. The blue in the corner. The blue in the corner was there? Already there. So what was in the corner? Like circle stars or 48 stars. At that point in time, it would have been. I forget what the history of all the flag uh, is. We might have to cut is. this whole part out of the show. <laughs> You might have to go back. And uh, <laughs> the uh, the American flag uh, design. Yeah, it's because remember Betsy Ross. We just went through this whole thing about uh, Betsy Ross and, right. and that controversy with the circle. And the circle had, you know, you remember what that looked like and, and all that. Um, <clears throat> so there was all this controversy with the circle. And that was the 13 stars representing the colony. Right. The circle had a lot of represent- representation. So maybe they wanted to upgrade that. They did want to upgrade that. Um, and maybe they he thought this was too... My thinking is his upgrade was simply just adding um, the states to it. like uh, So they included Hawaii and Alaska. Well, and then, actually pretty soon we'll probably have 51st because I believe that um, we are in a... Like I think Puerto Rico at one point in time was going to become a state or something like that. Okay, so I'm at... At the website, uh, the Betsy Ross flag in uh, seventeen seventy seven. Okay, we're going down to nineteen fifty eight. There's a whole lot of adaptations. Then we're eighteen twenty. Now the flags thirteen stripes, twenty three stars. Uh, eighteen twenty two, twenty four stars. Uh, eighteen forty eight. We're at thirty stars. So as they add the states, there's a weird Fort Sumter flag. In 1961. That's really weird. In 1863, now we have 35 stars. I'm jumping right ahead. 1891, 44 stars. They added Wyoming into that mix. And 1896, there's 45 stars. Uh, 1908, 46 stars. 
And in 1912, 1912 is when we have what looks to be our current flag with just 48 stars with that. And then we go into, what was that date again? It was 1958. 1958. And there we go, 1959, flag of 49, 1960, flag of 50. So yeah, it looks like it came right after... So the kid stuff. did nothing but add two stars to a flag. He just miscounted the, the stars. Yeah. No, he didn't miscount them. He said he assumed that the other two states were following suit, so he put 50 stars that is correct. on. So, yeah, I mean, he added two two stars on it. That's all well, he did. Well, what did the other it. kids do? Just Were they trying to create a different flag? I have no idea what they were trying to do. I don't like do because this, the design... this part. Can we cut this part? <laughs> we kill this one out there. No, I mean, you're looking at it. You see, it, it is what it is. There's some weird adaptations in here, I think. Cause I feel like Google led me astray. Google did lead you astray. And that, I think, is a, a great way to kind of finish out. Say, hey, Google Thanks, did not Google. give you the answer. That's where I would go with the three res- resources and try to find uh, something out. But it does have the... Uh, Oh, in 19, 1949, uh, Truman signs a bill for Flag Day. So I don't know if that's significant that's at all. That's not significant I, at all. I'm just pulling that out there. So uh, lesson learned is we don't always know what we know. Oh, yeah. They knew that already. <laughs> they knew that already. So that's our interesting facts today. If you have any interesting facts that you think might blow us out of the water. Or, or if so- we really blew out on one of our facts. <laughs> let us know <laughs> maybe one of our facts was not so great thanks a lot google uh then uh fill us in like share uh rate review all those wonderful things thank you so much and we will be back next week with more fun uh doing life radio stuff right right okay i'm just i'm waiting for you I to say something you, close. you look like you were going in for a big close so i, I was keep, just gonna sit here and smile and let you close i keep looking over for you to, to make the final like comment to, you goodbye, always close goodnight. I always wrap up. I'm waiting for you to be like, goodbye, goodnight, or okay, that's it. We're done. See you next week.